Hello, welcome to Octagon St. Laveau. I'm your hostess, Betty St. Laveau. On this show, we discuss the history of mixed martial arts and Ultimate Fighting Championship. Because I'm pretty much a new fan, I'm just going to uh, and kind of help you go to different websites that will help you learn about it if you're a fan. And I'm just going to comment some on events that have happened and uh, upcoming events. I'm so not crit critiquing here. I'm simply just stating facts. All right, so let's start off with um, uh, congrats to Tyron Woodley for winning his belt a couple weeks ago. I didn't mention that last week on my first episode. Also, on our first episode, happy birthday to Khabib Nurmagomedov. I was wearing a hat in his honor. I'm glad I was. I forgot it today. I think I might be wearing it next week. We'll see. I want to take care of that real quick. So then, last week I also mentioned names of some fighters that I admired. Here are a few more. Amanda Nunes, Brian Ortega, Chris Cyborg, Fedor Emelianenko, Victor Cruz, and Valentina Shevchenko. I'm still learning how to say everyone's names. I hope I didn't make a mistake there. Okay, so next, um, I've been looking at Mind Smash because my very favorite commentator, Mr. Kuv and Reverend Kitty of Alpaca Thesaurus, uh, they kind of advised me to check out Mind Smash. Excellent, excellent uh, commentaries on Warriors, Worldview, and Headspace. So uh, one quote that I learned from Mind Smash is, the ultimate aim of martial arts is not to have to use them. Emiyato Miyamoto Musashi, a very famous samurai, uh, taught that worldview. You can find that March 31st, 2018 on YouTube. Check out that uh, commentary on it. Uh, as uh, Mind Smash was discussing the role of the mixed martial artist, he mentioned GSP, George St. Pierre, and the line of composure. George St. Pierre is one of the most elegant, classy, and uh, one of the best fighters uh, who we've seen in mixed martial arts. And uh, Mike Smash discusses his evolution as a fighter. Uh, he also mentions how uh, boundaries get crossed, but nothing is perfect in life. And maybe uh, that can be why there's a conflict and a change in our lives. All right, so next I want to reiterate what I was talking about last week about the different um, type of fights there are in the U UFC and I, uh, in mixed martial arts. There are seven different types that I know of and the first is numbered, the second is UFC on Fox, uh, the third is Fight Night, UFC Fight Pass, the Ultimate Fighter Finale, uh, UFC on FX, UFC on, I believe, Fox One, UFC Live and UFC Fox Sports One. Okay, so um, there might be three big, big bouts throughout the year, but there are different types of fights that occur. Also, um, because I'm a, a recent fan, there there are at least 500 fighters. There are so many fighters out there, and so uh, it's sort of hard to get to know each one. But the more that you expose yourself to different divisions, et cetera, uh, the more that you can uh, understand uh, that there are a lot more warriors than the ones that get the big title chances. Okay, so next I'm going to reiterate about the different types of shows that I've been learning, uh, my MMA UFC information, and also they're just the ones that I prefer, but they're so superb. That's why I started to get into mixed martial arts. and. What I also discovered was that not every channel is, is equal, is built equally, okay? Like some are better than others. So these are my top ones. Um, uh, Alpaca Thesaurus, thank you, Mr. Curve, for everything. Um, great psychological breakdown of the fighter's body language and maybe uh, some psychological makeup there. 
Then we have uh, mixed multi which gives the breakdowns, the editing is so fantastic, and there's a bit of humor in uh, the tone, but the breakdowns are, are awesome. Then we've got Weasel, who I totally adore because um, Weasel, uh, Kenok, and I think it's Weasel and Kenok, they uh, break everything down pretty scientifically, but they're so sympathetic to the new fan. They try and help you understand what's going on with their breakdowns. And then, um, of course, there's Mind Smash, Skip to My MMA, which is more like, a, from what I remember, facts. And, of course, uh, my man Chael Sun in there, who has a, quite a few different podcasts. He has Chael Sonnen, and I think You're Welcome by Chael Sonnen. So he was sort of my first anchor person that um, helped me like MMA, UFC. Okay, so, uh, oh, and let's not forget MMA On Point, which totally gives 10 best of lists. MMANation.com is also excellent. All right, okay, so um, I think I got, giving shout out to my guys there who helped me understand this excellent sport and Next, I would like to talk about the, my first live press conference that I saw between Khabib Namagadoff and Conor McGregor. Um, there weren't any fans in the room. Uh, There's only press there. The fans waited outside. Uh, they totally uh, noticed when the, bo uh, the fighter showed up uh, at the conference. Uh, Conor was advertising his whiskey, which I thought was all right. Uh, he seemed a little mana, mana. Khabib was cool. So in my mind, uh, Connor was shrill, Khabib was chill. Uh, and people say that that's Connor's thing and is Connor's thing to do what he does like that. I think that he's, according to Alpaca Thesaurus and Nick Smalley Wapri and others, he is the master of, um, psychological warfare, and it's part of a shtick. Khabib Namagadoff, uh, uh, his English isn't that hot compared to Connor's, but they were able to have an exchange that I thought was pungent if short. I don't know who's going to win. I'm sort of leaning, the last four or five days have been leaning towards Khabib, but this is such intense and excellent fight that there are so many fighters out there who, are all, who also say, what a great fight. One's good at grappling, the other's good, other one's good at striking. For me, I think it's going to be whoever gets to the other one first. If Khabib can get Connor up against that cage, if Connor, he'll, he'll, he'll probably have a good chance of winning. If Connor strikes first, Khabib is down. So we only have to see. And that's a great thing about MMA, and that's what I love about it. I never, I never pick a winner. Um, but it's an inexact science. Uh, uh, in the women's divisions, a gal can beat all these other gals, but then get licked by one who will lick her again. It's, it's really incredible, so you just never know. And I think as non-fighters, we will always be kept guessing about, gosh, is he going to win or is that person going to win? Or is she going to win, that person going to win? Okay, so I think that the last thing I want to touch on is... Uh, my man Mind Smashes uh, documentary, and it's titled The Meaning of Pain, and please check that on YouTube. So he explains to us that the oak tree, it's a little seed, and it grows big, but it's because nature tries to beat it down. And it's the same thing in life. A warrior is honed by the experiences that happen to them. And please check out some of these uh, uh, channels. They're so great. They helped me become a fan of the sport. I read read and see romance novels. I'm a romantic. I never thought that I would be interested in this pure uh, form of sport of expression. Okay, so I think that's it for me today. I'm your hostess, Betty St. Laveau. You've been watching Octagon St. Laveau. This is a show that won't air too frequently because there's not a lot of action in between 
uh, matches, but uh, I will probably do uh, another show after uh, the um, Conor Khabib fight. Okay, and until then, if you don't like MMA UFC, that's all right. But if you do, check out some of these sites. Ciao, Bayless.